Hi, I'm Angela Jackson, and I'm here to show you a quick 10 or 15 minute yoga based post workout or competition stretch that you can do at home. All you need is a yoga mat or a grippy surface, a little bit of space, and today I'm also going to be using a yoga strap. You can also use a towel. So let's get started. We're going to start in child's pose. You're going to take your knees wide, flatten the tops of your feet, bring your big toes together, sink your hips all the way down, and with a long spine, bring your forehead down to rest. We're just going to start to slow the breath, inhaling and exhaling only through the nose, taking this time to reconnect to our bodies, our breath, and to allow our muscles time to lengthen and stretch, during our workouts, we shorten our muscles. Now we just want to take this time to release the lactic acid that builds up and causes muscle soreness. Our breath should be smooth like this all the way throughout the sequence. And just go at your own pace, go at your own level. Modify at any time if need be. Let's take one more big breath. Exhale it all out. And then look towards your hands. We're going to come to downward facing dog. So the hands are at shoulder distance. Spread the fingers. The hips come back. And we're going to pedal these feet out. Stretching one leg a little bit more at a time. Just feeling that stretch through the backs of the legs, the hamstrings, the calves, the Achilles. And on downward facing dog, just bend those knees as much as you need to to protect the upper body. So we want to find this nice long line. Take two more breaths here. Then on your next inhale breath, let's come forward to plank pose and then slowly lower all the way down onto our bellies. Press the tops of your feet down and then with a long spine, rise up to a cobra stretch. So we're stretching the back, stretching the front body. If you need to come down lower, feel free. Just take a couple breaths here. Shoulders nice and relaxed. Good, one more inhale breath. Exhale, lower your chest and press back to downward facing dog. Then we're going to look towards our hands. Inhale, step your right foot forward, and then exhale, bring your left knee down. Coming to a low lunge. So be careful that the front knee is not going past the toes. Just bring your hands up onto your front thigh. Roll your shoulders onto your back. Let's take our hands behind us, interlace them, and then open up your chest. Tailbones drawn under, chest is lifted, shoulders relaxed. Take deep breaths. Breathing right into that left hip flexor. Key is to hold these poses a little bit longer. Let's release those hands down. We're going to bring them to the inside of the front foot. Take your front foot about outer hip distance and then start to bring your hips even further forward. Try to keep your back as flat as you can. Gaze forward as well. And then we're going to allow the front foot to come off the mat. So we're going to press down into the outer edge, pull the big toe back and let the knee fall open. Two more breaths. And bring that knee back to face forward. The left hand's going to stay planted down. The right hand's going to come onto the outer thigh. We're going to start to twist a little bit here to stretch the back. Now from here, if you like, you can start to pull that back heel in towards you to get a deeper stretch to the hip flexor and into the quadricep. If you want to go a little bit deeper, don't force it, but the right hand might be able to come back and grab that foot and help you to get a deeper stretch. So listen to your body. It might take a little while of working on this sequence before you're able to grab the foot, and that's okay. Take one more inhale breath. Exhale it all out. Release the back foot. Come back to center. We're going to draw the hips back, bring that right foot directly in front of the hip, and we're going to straighten that front leg. Pull the toes back. Try to keep your back nice and flat. If you need to, hands can also come up higher on the hips. Extend your chest forward, heel presses out, sit bone reaches back, we're going to stretch those hamstrings a little bit deeper. Now if at any time you feel like you want to hold a stretch a little bit longer, feel free. Two more breaths. Good, last one. And then bring your weight back forward onto that front foot. We're going to bring our hands in front of us and we're going to pop the left leg to the top of our mat. 
Feet are directly underneath the sit bones. Toes point forward. Bend the knees a little bit so you can rest your torso on top of your thighs. Let your head fall and grab onto opposite elbows. So the arms and the head are heavy to lengthen the spine and stretch the upper back. Let the neck relax. Be sure that the pelvis tilts forward. So as deeply as you need to bend the knees, that's fine. Take two more breaths. And then relax those elbows, lower the hands. We're gonna take the right foot now, step it back nice and far on your mat, lower that knee down, bring your hands up onto your front thigh. Hips are forward, working on the right hip flexor now. Lift your heart, relax your shoulders, bring those hands behind you, squeeze the shoulder blades. Deep breaths. Good, one more inhale breath. And then lower those hands to the inside of the front foot. Take it a little bit wider and we can go deeper into the hips. Keep your back nice and flat. Look forward. Try to keep that front knee hugging in initially. And then we can let that front foot flex. Pull the toes up towards the knee. Now that hip is opening. Try to really soften the hips here. And then bring that foot back in. The right hand's gonna stay planted down on the mat. Begin to twist. You can use your left hand to press into the left thigh and look over the back shoulder. If this feels good enough for you, just stay here. If you want a little bit more, you can pull that back heel in and perhaps see if that left hand can catch the foot and draw it in closer towards you. Breathing into the hip flexor, into the quadricep. One more inhale and exhale. Release the back foot. Bring your hands down. Bring that left foot directly in front of your hip. Walk your hands back. Peel the foot away from the mat. Press your heel out. Sit your hips and lengthen your spine forward. If you need to, hands can come up higher. We want to avoid rounding the spine. And as we hold and breathe, listen to the body. The body might say, I want a little bit more, and then you can go a little bit further into the stretch. Good, take one more inhale breath. And exhale. Let's come forward, hands on either side. Curl your back toes and slide that front foot all the way back. Let's come back to downward facing dog. From here, we're gonna move into pigeon stretch for the hips. So we're gonna take the right leg, reach it back, and then sweep this leg through so that the knee comes down to rest just to the outside of the hip. The foot rests where it is. The back leg's gonna extend straight back from the shoulder, so take a look back, make sure that's where it is. Lengthen, and then you can walk those hands forward and come to a comfortable place for the upper body. Keep the back of the head lifted, nice deep breath. This is a really deep stretch into that outer right hip, into the piriformis. Also addressing the hip flexor on the left side. So we want to use the breath to soften these areas. Trying to make those exhale breaths nice and long. Just giving our body time to counter the work that we do in our training that we feel ready to go back at it soon. And if you're really enjoying this stretch, feel free to stay here. I'm gonna give you another option for a variation. So that's with the left arm coming across the top of your mat. The right hand plants down and you can do a little bit of a twist here. Just watch that you don't change the hips at all. Now we wanna come out of this nice and slow. So come back to center, plant your hands, curl your back toes, take your time and release back to downward facing dog. And you can rock a little bit in the hips. Notice how good your right side feels. Then we're gonna go over to the left side. So reach your left leg back, sweep it through. Lower the knee just to the outside of the hip. Check out the right leg, make sure it's lined up. And then lengthen your spine and walk those hands out in front. Just notice how this side feels versus the right. Take some deep breaths. 
Now, because this is an intense stretch, you might start to bring tension into your face, your shoulders, to so see if you can keep those nice and relaxed. Pigeon stretch in isolation is a great post-workout stretch to do if you just have a little bit of time, maybe holding each side for one or two minutes. And in time, you'll notice that your flexibility, your range of motion increases, that you recover much faster after training, and you're going to want to come back to these stretches time and time again. And if you want, you can stay here for a few more breaths, or you can do the variation with the twist. Right arm coming across the mat, left hand comes in front of the knee, looking back over top that top shoulder, really pull the left shoulder onto the back. And come back to center. Plant your palms down, curl your back toes, slowly release back to downward facing dog. And you can rock in the hips. I draw all those hips back in a nice stretch of the spine. And then we're going to bring our feet just halfway up on our mat with our toes out. We're going to sink our hips down, bring our hands to prayer position, use the elbows on the inner knees. Try to press those heels down. If the heels are lifting, not to worry, eventually they'll reach the mat. Or you can also roll the back of your mat up and bring your heels to rest there. Good. Two more breaths. Good stuff, let's sit back. Now you can grab your towel, grab your strap, whatever you're using. We're gonna do a quick hamstring release on our backs. So we're gonna come all the way down. We're gonna wrap the strap or the towel around the ball of the right foot and then take that leg straight up. Left leg's a little bit active. We're gonna hold the strap only in our right hand, lift that heel, try to open up the space behind the knee. It's a great one for getting deep into the hamstrings. Stay for two more breaths. You can always stay for longer if you like. And then slowly bend this knee, release the strap. Extend your right leg out, bend your left leg in, wrap the strap around the ball of the foot, take that leg up. Hold the strap only in your left hand, right hand can rest on the right thigh. Lift that knee, open up the space behind it. Two more breaths, maybe go a little bit deeper if you can. And slowly release that leg down. Just extend it out, notice how the legs feel. You can move your strap or your towel off to the side. And then we're gonna finish with legs up the wall, one of my favorite poses. Feel free to stay here as long as you want. The legs are gonna feel great. This is a great recovery pose, or if you have a lot of competitions in a short amount of time frame, this is a great pose to do in between. So you just wanna find some space where you can extend the legs up, bring your bum nice and close to the wall, and then just come down to rest on your back. Legs come up, they rest here, arms by your side, palms up. You can close your eyes, you can play soft music if you like, and then just stay here for at least three minutes, but I would aim for five or more just to give the legs really a time to benefit. The heart also gets a rest. And that is the end of our sequence. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come back to it often. The more often you do it, the better you're gonna feel. Take care.